everyone, Phil from 3DP UK here. So just a quick update for following on from my um, upgrade for the firmware for the Copra Max. Um, using the Zombie 3D profile for the Copra Max, which is in the link in my previous video description. Um, so as you will notice now, um, this does a bed leveling of 7x7 seven seven, rather than the 25, which is the 5x5. Five and um, what this will give you is um, a better profile for uh, bed adhesion and uh, obviously the nozzle will be obviously the bed is totally unlevel in, in some places and you'll see even with the 25 point check you sometimes get like an area where it doesn't quite lay so with this 7x7 seven seven, you're going to get a much better profile mesh leveling um, the other thing is Quite a few of the um, people that have done this uh, firmware have, have mentioned about this noise that you're getting here. So this is really just the, the, uh, the linear advance. So it's nothing to be worried about. It's just um, part of the actual um, firmware itself. So um, nothing to worry about in that respect. Um, the reason why I'm doing another bed level right now is because I carried out a uh, reflash um, the reason for that is I actually didn't save uh, following the firmware update. So um, I found there was a few bugs from doing that. So it's something to be noted for when you do your firmware update. Um, simple, in the description I'll leave the process that you do following that, which I believe is an M500 and then an M503. So that's basically just updating the firmware and saving it into the actual um, motherboard firmware as it's as it stands so this then keeps it that firmware and going forward and doesn't make any changes and doesn't glitch um, the other thing I've done is um, my e-steps value because obviously anyone that's already done their e-steps um, would have realized or possibly wouldn't have realized that following a firmware update it puts you back to factory standards so um, you will know that your e-value is 405 um, mine is now 428 so definitely redo your e-steps following this firmware update um, the other thing to do is a PID auto tune for your bed and your nozzle um, there are videos on YouTube for that um, I believe I may have even put one up myself but the e-steps value I've got a video check through my video um, log and you'll find the e-steps following using Prontoface um, like I say you do hear like a slight Russell as the um, the head moves along but it's nothing to be concerned about it's just uh, some of the settings from the firmware nothing's rubbing it's nothing to be concerned about um, speaking to Will from Studio Zombie 3D this is fairly normal um, the other thing to take into consideration is just um, to make sure that when you do any firmware updates that um, you check for all your values and your, like I say, e-steps and your PID auto-tune. This will then go back to factory standard after the firmware, so don't assume that because you've carried out the e-steps in a previous um, firmware, so the original stock, that it isn't the case. So when, whenever you reflash your um, printer, um, it takes it back to factory standard plus any sort of changes, i.e. the Studio Zombie version 1.8 that I'm using right now. Um, so right now, as I said, it's doing the bed level. Um, and then what I'm actually doing now is just um, some checks on the, uh, so I'm just doing checks on the linear advance. So um, I'll drop another link in the description how to actually carry that out. I'm following Studio Zombie 3D's video on linear advance. Um, just select either the Viper video or the Cobra video um, is pretty much the same um, you put in your printer name you put in your bed size the nozzle temperature at 200 and uh, like I say in the video it gives a better description so I'm doing that so basically I'll do my bed level right now and then I'll do my um, linear advance checks on that so yeah um, overall thoughts I've done some prints on it um, noticed no issues in terms of layer shifting. I know quite a few people have had some layer shifting, not quite sure why that would be the case. Um, I haven't seen that myself, um, but I did notice on one of my prints that I seem to have quite a low flow 
Um, so there was under extruding, so which led me to realise that I needed to carry out my E-steps. Um, so connected up my printer through the front, as you can see, to my computer itself, and uh, connected up onto face, which you can get offline, um, and just connect up the printer, and then put in your um, details into that, and, and and actually ask it to give you. So there's some, like I say, there's some videos online, YouTube. I'm not going to describe it now because it would make the video far too long. But um, how to use one to face, there's plenty out there. Um, but what that did is it alerted me to the fact that the E steps value had gone back to stock, so E405. Um, and I believe that was under extruding for me. So, what I did um, quite simply, really, is put a ruler from the entrance to the uh, extruder itself, measured out 100 millimeters, so 10 centimeters. Um, uh, extruded 100 using pronto face and I was about 5.5 millimeters out so effectively I was about 95% in terms of flow so um, I was under extruding 5% so I've whacked that back up to the value of 428 now E428 and that's quite simple like I say there's a video on my YouTube check that out um, and then marked out um, 100 millimeters again leading into the same point don't change it make sure you measure from the same point works out about roughly there for me um, extruded again and the entrance point which is just here was spot on so the line stopped right there and I knew that I was getting a hundred percent so I would carry out that at least two or three times before entering your value completely as a as your agreed figure that you're going to save into your firmware um, quite simple and then once you've done that um, carry an M500 uh, and that should save it into the firmware yeah so just a quick video like I say I'm having no issues at all and um, like I said in the previous video let's move the ring light because it's a bit glary so uh, the issues that I was seeing was obviously the Z offset so right now it's at zero so when I was changing it it's not showing as I said in my previous video um, you press OK um, you go back, so I'm not sure why it did that, uh, so it's 0 0.01, so as I previously explained, um, the stock firmware that come from any cubic was 0 0.05, we can now do 0 0.01, which is amazing because you can just do that fractional change rather than, sometimes you can do a 0 0.05 and it's not quite right on the bed and then you change it to 0, 0.00 and then all of a sudden it's too low and then you're squishing the pay, uh, the actual filament which is no good so having this fractional change of 0 0.01 is better so yeah that's Phil from 3DP UK sorry about the rambling um, I just thought I'd give you a quick update video in terms of how I'm finding it and uh, like I say no issues at all Okay, in addition to this video, just the, the questions around pause at height for filament change. So before, if you paused it, uh, the actual filling head would stay above the print. So it was really difficult I to change it and try and get the filament out from underneath the filling head. As, you, as anyone who, who's, who's actually tried that will realize that sometimes that is quite a difficult feat, especially if it's a... Um, a fiddly object that you're printing uh, if any slightest little knock on it could potentially damage the print and uh, put you back to square square one um, so I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what happens with the firmware update that I've showed in my previous video and um, what happens with uh, pores at height now so currently I'm just doing a calibration cube because I've done some e-steps value changes and linear advanced changes so um, over to the screen so what you need to do is previously press pause and what that will do is say pause waiting for a cache command the cache command is telling the printer to move clear of the print and move to the back of the bed you, the bleeping is basically just telling me that it's made a change um, so imagine you're changing your filament so um, back to the screen the only you can't make any filament changes uh, automatic um, 
I would say that it was only manual, but to be fair, I only ever do it manual, so just remove, snip the um, filament here, pull it through because the nozzle's still hot, take it out, put your new filament color in if you want a color change, pull it through, go back over to the print. You see that the print itself is not being touched. Um, click resume and temperature has stayed at 195 and 60 on the bed straight over to that and we're back at the print obviously you did ensure which i didn't do in order that you haven't got any um string in at the bottom which is the whole point of moving the filling head out of the way but because i'm just doing a calibration cube i'm not looking for any sort of um perfect prints here it's just just make sure any changes that i've made are working yep so it's looking good so yeah that's that's the next part of the video was to talk about the filament change like i say it's manual only not um automatic um maybe future firmware we can have the screen say uh, filament in filament out but i always found it quite a slow process and the more you're touching the screen the more likely you could potentially damage the print and press the wrong button so manual is always the best for me yeah so just thought i'd add that into the video as well Take care and like and subscribe.